There are two things people love. Getting away from it all at a great destination and being there with friends and family. This is the story of a group of young friends who seem to be moving much closer to being a family. You see, their real families are flung out all over the country. In fact, all over the world. They work together in the IT department of a huge Seattle corporation and their lives pretty much revolve around smart screens, smartphones, and cutting edge technology. But suddenly, for the first time, they find themselves on a getaway vacation in a place that's about as opposite from their wired world as you could imagine. They've come to Mount Hood Territory in Clackamas County, Oregon. It's a place of primitive, jaw-dropping beauty, where sometimes even cell phones don't always work. Can these seven young super techies really pull the plug? We're about to find out as we go along while they're getting away together. Getting away together is made possible by TripAdvisor.com. 50 million reviews and opinions from real travelers. They treated me like a rock star. Even the concierge knew me by name. We could kayak right from our own private dock. It felt like we had the whole island to ourselves. I could almost reach out my window and touch the Eiffel Tower. What an amazing vacation. We can't wait to go back. Fantastic. Millions of reviews of hotels, vacation rentals, and more. All from real people who've been where you want to go. TripAdvisor.com. You've planned your trip for a long time. Wouldn't it be nice to know someone is helping you make it safe and relaxing? For more than 20 years, CSA Travel Protection has been making travel convenient with friendly expert service, giving you security that your travel investment is safe, whatever happens, and the assistance you need from travel delays to emergency care. Before, during, and after your trip, we're CSA Travel Protection. Hey guys, you would not believe how beautiful it is here. And we're skiing in July. This is a view of Mount Hood from our vacation home. Awesome. That's us in the woods this morning. It was magical, like out of a fairy tale. We went kayaking on Trillium Lake. And when you look up, you see this incredible view of Mount Hood surrounded by glaciers. The whole place is exploding with color. It just feels like we're in another world. Oregon's Mount Hood territory, close to Portland, a world away. It's only a little more than a four-hour drive from Seattle to Oregon's Mount Hood territory. But for our urban dwellers, it was like entering a whole new world. We have never taken a vacation together. So Linda and Brian and Adam and Jenisal and Gerardo and Jacob and I, this is our first chance to get away and experience life kind of disconnected to all the other stuff that normally consumes us on a day-to-day -day basis. We like to explore new opportunities, new, new adventures, and a trip to Mount Hood just sounded like the perfect thing. We saw pictures of the vacation rental online. We always look for vacation rentals first, especially if there's a larger group, just because of, you know, it feels like home, but you're in a different setting. We're down this winding road with tons of trees, and we're just kind of wondering what we're getting ourselves into. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this, this beautiful house pops up. It's kind of like a log cabin house that looked, looked awesome from the outside. When we pulled up to the house and we saw that welcoming moose, we, we knew we were in for an adventure. We walk in and it's beautiful and this cathedral window right here in front. You know, you see the little um, antler chandelier and then all of the rustic wood in the house. Oh, wow, wow. look at this room. Look at that river. Oh my. Oh my gosh, look at this kitchen, it's so crazy. It was just gorgeous. The pictures online didn't do it justice. Look at this view, it's so crazy. Oh, look, over there too. So nice. Oh, man. Hey guys, I uh, called this over here. There you go. I found it first. I found it first. The clencher for me, what cinched it was, I could hear that river just roaring, and you wouldn't think it, it was the best part. Once we opened the door, we ran outside and like, wow, the house really does back up to a river. It's nothing like experiencing it, opening the door and saying, wow, there's a river 10 feet away. Oregon.
Michigan's Mount Hood Territory reaches out from the greater Portland south to the Willamette Valley and east to majestic Mount Hood. It's located about 50 miles southeast from Portland and named after the 11,245 foot peak of its most recognized landmark. This dormant volcanic mountain was named after the British Admiral Samuel Hood when explorers first spied the peak from the Columbia River back in 1792. More than a hundred years ago, the U.S. government established the Cascade Range Forest Reserve and divided it into several national forests. Mount Hood National Forest is one of them. In all of the more than 300,000 acres of wilderness. My name was Greg, but my friends call me Chopper up here. One of the most magical areas is the old Salmon River Trail near Welch's. And absolutely just fantastic. Around here, people will tell you that nobody knows it better than Greg Chopper Marino of Mount Hood Adventure. If you have any questions, just give me a shout and we'll get everything all taken care of. The trail was amazing. I'd never seen so much greenery and we had a great tour guide and he was able to explain everything. Just barely getting into the second growth of the flowers and the berries are starting to come out. So as we cruise around, we'll see all kinds of things. And if you see something, please stop me and say, hey, what's this or what's that? Old Salmon River Trail meanders along lush old growth forest. This is the wild and scenic Salmon River. Oh, the Stillhead Run up here, Salmon Run, the Fall Chinook and Spring Chinook. There's this water as well as bugs. From the parking area, the trail is steep for a short distance and then relatively flat the whole rest of the way. It's beautiful. There are 10-foot thick cedars and vines dripping from the branches. It just seemed a lot more lush at Mount Hood. Sometimes when you looked around, it just seemed like it was an enchanted forest. You know, kind of expecting like little gnomes to pop up, little fairies to kind of fly around. <laughs> it's the perfect spot for a picture. We need to stop. Oh, Let's take a quick picture. <laughs> That's perfect smile. Salmon River. Salmon River. <laughs> Anybody from Oregon will tell you, without reservation, that they're proudest of one of their handcrafted products, beer. In almost any little mountainside town, like the village of Government Camp, you'll find a microbrewery like Mount Hood Brewing, making suds you just can't buy in stores. The Ice Axe Grill has become sort of an institution on the south slope of Mount Hood. So guys, what's the verdict here? Yeah. Tough choice. Yeah. Tough choice. And you yeah, need to enjoy your beer here because none of their beer is bottled and none of it leaves the state of Oregon. Uh, being a stout, it's going to be very malty. And we brew it with a nice bit of uh, chocolate in there as well. Not any additives, just comes from the brew itself. So do you guys have any questions regarding that? Uh, well, I'd really like to take some home with a six pack if you can give me some. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have any six packs here. We don't do any bottling. Most local ale houses uh, choose to forego the bottling process as it actually requires more space. So what we do have right here for you is a nice 64 ounce bottle, also known as a growler. Yeah, that's like pretty big. big. That is, that is huge. What's a growler? Your little tote and carry. This is gonna be your best friend for your beer. So it'll hold about four pints there. So that's what we can give you to take home. We fill it on th off the draft, tighten it up for you. So Corey, what's the big deal about uh, Oregon beer? Because Oregon brewers have been around for a really long time and it's actually exploding in popularity nowadays. There isn't a town that you could drive through in Oregon that probably doesn't have a local microbrewery establishment. Uh, uh, to Corey. Corey. Thanks, Corey. Corey. Yes, yes Corey. Really good stuff. <laughs> Corey, great stuff. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Towering above all of this territory is Mount Hood itself. It's the highest mountain in Oregon, and it's rich with glaciers, actually creating a unique hotspot for something you can't do anywhere else in North America in July, except here. 
I heard that in Mount Hood there was going to be snow in July, and I didn't believe it. You don't see snow until you get about halfway up there. You're kind of circling Mount Hood, but trees are in the way, so you don't really see it. And then there's that one turn, and then it's right in front of you, and it's just, oh my god, look at all that snow. By far, my favorite part of the trip was the excursion to Mount Hood. It's the middle of July, and I could not believe how much snow was on that mountain. There were tons of skiers. When we went out to Mount Hood at Timberline, it was just the perfect day. Pretend you like each other. <laughs> I absolutely loved the ski lift, and here's why. I'm absolutely, completely terrified of heights. And as I was on the ski lift, I'm taking pictures of myself as we're going up, just clicking and holding on for dear life, hoping that one of these photos gets a really great shot. And there's one photo in the history of all the photos that I've been in over the course of my life that I said is the most genuine picture of me you will ever see. Afraid of heights, but absolutely amazing, amazing experience. But don't assume that if you take the mile-long ski lift up Mount Hood, you're left to your own devices to get back down. Many people come up here just for the extraordinary scenic views of the Cascade Mountain Range, and then take the lift back. We have a future together, come back. I will, I will. Make sure not to break anything on uh, the We'll do. <laughs> One of the directors told us that this is like the epicenter of snow and skiing and snowboarding in the U.S. and Olympic teams train there because it's the only place in North America where you can ski or snowboard in July to be able to snowboard and play in the snow in the summertime in Mount Hood, it's, it's, it's a different experience. You know, you feel lighter. You don't feel like you, you have 10 million layers on. And by the end of the day, you're just pooped and you're tired. The Timberline Lodge rests at the 6,000 foot level of Mount Hood, a national historic landmark the lodge was built during the Great Depression of the 30s by local citizens working under the Works Progress Administration, or WPA. It's publicly owned and privately operated today, but the folks who live around here think of it as their own. The floors are made out of Oregon white oak. We've got some of the, the pillars here are made out of ponderosa pine. 55 feet, you see six main pillars harvested locally from the Pacific Northwest. Now these pillars hold up the roof which gets heavy snow during, during the wintertime because in the Pacific Northwest, we have very heavy snow. So how much snow do you guys get here? Well, on average, we usually get about 15 to 21 feet of snow, but the record is 27. It, it, you can see outside, there's, there's still a lot of snow yeah. in mid-July. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look at this chimney over here. This chimney was made out of andesite rocks from the Mount Hood itself. Now, during the Great Depression, there was not a lot of money to pay for materials, so a lot of the materials were also reused. Now these are actually uh, chains from tires during snow. And these are railroad ties that were actually forged by hand into these andirons. Daryl Nelson is the third generation master blacksmith who's been lovingly fashioning replacement parts and new works of beauty for the Timberline Lodge. Today, the Lodge is a hotel, restaurant, ski resort, and arguably the best place in Oregon for a steaming hot chocolate. Hi. Oh, hi there. You guys met Heidi, our <laughs> mascot? Hi. Hi. It's been a Timberline tradition to have St. Bernard's here as our mascot. Oh. <laughs> Adam's found his mate. She's the eighth oh. Heidi that we've had. Oh, is that right? Eighth Heidi. Heidi the eighth? Heidi the eighth. By the way, if this place looks vaguely familiar, it was the exterior location for the opening scenes in Stanley Kubrick's 1980 classic horror film, The Shining. The same volcanic slopes that offer year-round skiing also provide runoff that enriches the soil of the valleys below, making the Willamette Valley one of the largest fruit-growing regions in the country. Tell us a little bit about what you have going on right now this time of year, Becky. Well, right now we have raspberries, like you guys are gonna pick. Chef Andrew Garrett knows all about this stuff, 
He partners with local farmers like Becky at Albecky Farms to offer a full range of delicious farm-to-table food to visiting groups like ours. So how do we know which raspberries to pick? And Chef Andrew always goes along for the fun. And you just want to stop and lift up the different layers. And anything that's red and comes off easily, that's what you want. We had a really good time going out to pick raspberries. Most of us, except for Heather, that was our first time picking raspberries. So we kind of learned what was a good raspberry and how to pick them. Gerardo! <laughs> oh my gosh. We had the chance to work with a really great chef. Uh, and remember, if you eat more than you pick, you probably won't have room for dinner. <laughs> so what are you planning on cooking for tonight? What do you think we're going to do well, with these berries? Everybody thinks that berries are generally ice cream or sweets. Sweet, yeah. Well, we're going to have berries for dinner. He was right there. He was on hand. He was picking those berries with us. He was fun. And guys, is this not the freshest berry you've ever eaten? He was cool. He was our age. And you just liked him. You need a bucket? <laughs> I didn't need one. <laughs> I wouldn't quit your day job. They couldn't stop eating the raspberries. It was so sweet off the vine that it didn't make it to the bucket. Guys, the ladies are kicking your butts. I mean, seriously, way to go, ladies. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Somebody's eating dessert tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, Gerard, you gotta pick the berries. You can't just look at them. They're so pretty, though. Can we weigh these here? Yeah, I'll weigh them up for you on this scale. All right. Yes, those mushrooms look perfect, just like that. Don't overwork them. Keep them nice and tight, okay? Oh, thanks. It's very humble but he is the chef master. He can make anything out of anything. That's gonna make for a perfect hash layer, trust me. <laughs> he had great ideas, he was on top of his game. He loved coming back here and just showing us that you can do these great things with these local ingredients. Hey guys, come on, let's save a few for dessert, will we? Sorry. You got to watch what he was doing and I got to learn and that to me is what has been so amazing. Fresh Oregon salmon. I would have never in a million years thought to put raspberry sauce on salmon, but it was delicious. Bon appetit, everybody. Great job today. Thank you. With all of the fairly civilized fun and activities available within the Mount Hood territory, it's pretty hard to realize that this was once the end of a brutally difficult 2,000 mile journey west for American pioneers. Only one in 10 survived. The Oregon Trail was the only practical corridor to the entire western United States between 1843 and 1870s. And if it hadn't been for the Oregon Trail, places we know as Washington, Oregon, Nevada, and Idaho might not be a part of America today. Early pioneers faced one harrowing natural obstacle after the next on the Oregon Trail. When they reached its end in Oregon City, they encountered the mighty Willamette Falls. Today you can get a bit of an idea of what those pioneers faced with a kayak trip that gets you up pretty close to this cascading wonder. A world-class paddler, Sam Drevo, runs Northwest River Guides, alias Energy Kayaking. Take care, guys. Have a great trip. Paddle hard. Enjoy the falls. All right, guys. Welcome. We're here on the beautiful Willamette River, right in front of Oregon City. I've Oregon never been City kayaking before. I've gone white water rafting, where I'm part of a team to just kind of move the boat along, and we have a guide to steer us. But I've never been responsible for myself. Oregon City sits on two levels. You have the lower level, which is the downtown area, and you have the upper level, which is the residential area in Oregon City. So as we come around this bend in the river, you can look upstream and see the 43 bridge. That is the oldest single span arc bridge in the nation. Now we're entering the famous Willamette Falls locks. We got to see the locks and it, the locks are for um, moving boats from one elevation to another. It's a series of four chambers that fill up with water, taking boats around the falls. We were at the bottom of a lock, 
So picture being at the bottom of a dam and looking straight up at it, and there's a little bit of water trickling through. Right before the falls, you see the industrial places that used to be there, all of the mills, the paper mills that are right across from the falls. This is a paper mill right here, and it's the only one that's still in operation. We're gonna paddle all the way up, get a great view of the falls all the way up. As we got closer, there was just this, this brief patch of sunlight that just kind of shone over the, uh, the waterfalls, and it just, it just illuminated it, and it looked, it looked fantastic. It was majestic, it was beautiful, and we were right there to kind of witness it, and that was just a really cool moment for all of us. We're coming up into the falls. As soon as you get around the point of Black Rock, the current is gonna pick up, and you're gonna need to paddle continuously. One of the coolest things our group learned about Willamette Falls is that it's the second largest waterfall by volume in the United States next to Niagara Falls. Yeah, look at how cool this is. The word nestled is overused, of course, but that's the only way to describe the resort at the mountain. It's tucked right into the western highlands of Mount Hood, and it's a sweet spot to be when you're ready for a little pampering after all the mountain sports. You hardly notice the 157 guest rooms blended into the forest. There's even a 27-hole championship golf course. But Our Ladies took the morning off for a little downtime at the spa. Are you ready for your massage? Yeah, looks good. I'm so excited. Thank you. The resort at the mountain was incredible. What I loved about it is that it was really the full experience. The smells, the sounds, the plush robes, and we got to relax, we got to unwind, we had the chance to get away. Well, it appears that our seven Seattle super techies have seemed to achieve the impossible to unplug for almost a whole week. Uh, Gerardo. We do have to cut them some slack for playing video games. At least they're not connected to the outside world. But they do seem to be connected a little more to each other. When I look back on this experience, it's definitely one of the more memorable ones. This is our first trip out to Mount Hood. First time kayaking the river to see the falls. First time hiking Mount Hood. And just the beautiful setting. Never stayed at a vacation rental where there's a river running in the back. When I look back on this trip and this group of people, I think I'll remember this whole experience more just because with something like this, going away together, traveling together, all of us being there, it's like something you just can't ever fall out of touch from. Because people say that you can have a long time apart from a friend and then you get back to them and then it feels like you never had any time apart. Uh, that's how we will be here, be just because we'll always have this experience to look back on and we'll always have something to talk about. One of the reasons I love this location specifically, this lodge, the view that we have, is that I think it's outside of what we'd normally do. We are city dwellers, and this is, we're essentially escaping into the wilderness. We're getting away, we have this beautiful lodge that we're in, and you look outside and you have this beautiful rolling river, and you can smell that, the crispness of the air. And when you're laying in bed and that kind of overwhelms you. So everything here is wood and it's all very earthy, but it's the smell of nature and Christmas and everything all rolled up into one. I would recommend this to other people, other groups of friends, um, for a couple reasons. Obviously because, you know, you're trying new activities as a group and you get that sort of bonding, but, but more philosophically it's because you have that deeper connection with your, 
your friends and you start to understand them and, and see them in their, their own habitat as opposed to just because of a, a normal get together. You really get to understand them and, and, and get that deeper connection with them and, it, and that lasts forever. Someone once said, friends are the most important part of your life. Treasure the tears, treasure the laughter, but most importantly, treasure the memories. Even though these Seattle pals are still very young, they've racked up a fresh bunch of memories that will last them a lifetime. This might have been the first time, but it certainly won't be the last time. We'll see them getting away together. If you'd like to know more about the people, places, and activities featured in this or any other episode of Getting Away Together, log on to gettingawaytogether.com. That's gettingawaytogether.com. Vacation rentals used to be sort of a leap of faith. I remember my parents trying to book a house on Cape Cod and it was like somebody's sister-in-law knows someone who might possibly have a house available that week. Today though, the internet has totally changed that. Now you can find detailed vacation rental listings online and they have everything from photos to video tours to, most importantly, reviews from former guests. Maybe though it's amenities or proximity to a theme park. How many people do you need to seat at the dining room table or do you have anyone for whom stairs are an issue? Today, thanks to the internet, vacation rentals aren't a leap of faith anymore. You can find exactly what you want and get exactly what you're expecting. Getting Away Together was made possible by... TripAdvisor.com. 50 million reviews and opinions from real travelers. They treated me like a rock star. Even the concierge knew me by name. We could kayak right from our own private dock. It felt like we had the whole island to ourselves. I could almost reach out my window and touch the Eiffel Tower. What an amazing vacation. We can't wait to go back. Fantastic. Millions of reviews of hotels, vacation rentals, and more. All from real people who've been where you want to go. TripAdvisor.com. You've planned your trip for a long time. Wouldn't it be nice to know someone is helping you make it safe and relaxing? For more than 20 years, CSA Travel Protection has been making travel convenient with friendly, expert service, giving you security that your travel investment is safe, whatever happens, and the assistance you need from travel delays to emergency care. Before, during, and after your trip, we're CSA Travel Protection. Hey guys, you would not believe how beautiful it is here. And we're skiing in July. This is a view of Mount Hood from our vacation home. Awesome. That's us in the woods this morning. It was magical, like out of a fairy tale. We went kayaking on Trillium Lake. And when you look up, you see this incredible view of Mount Hood surrounded by glaciers. The whole place is exploding with color. It just feels like we're in another world. Oregon's Mount Hood territory. Close to Portland, a world away.